Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic at Trade Group, and this is your end of day as well as end of week market recap for Friday, March 22nd. And uh, that's we only have one more week to go of March, and uh, we're on to a new month just like that. Uh, the, the month of March will be uh, will be wrapping up. So, um, of course, we will do once we get there, we will do an end of uh, end of month recap and so forth. I'm already kind of looking at uh, you know the sectors that uh, that led us here and and, um, you know what's been going on for the for the whole month in general, but um, you know a, a, a kind of sleepy way to close out the week as um, this week was strong, uh, but um, but today was a little bit of uh, you know I, it seemed like a tired tape um, in some sense today. Risk disclaimer in front of you: everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only in this video. Um, and as and of course, um, please go to TribecaTradeGroup.com if you are looking to get more analysis and information from the Tribeca Trade Group. Um, we, uh, you know, we have uh, well. Anyway, I'll talk about that towards the end end, end of the video. But um, let's talk about what happened for the day. So SPY just down 20 basis points. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we had a strong week, right? Here's what the performance was for the week. Um, and it's in this this column. You know, we had one, two, three, four, four days of um, of gains. Um, again, it, it kind of seems so easy when you look at the what the market did for the week. And you're like, oh, wow, this must have been an easy week. I didn't think it was a particularly easy week. Um, you know, always with a Fed meeting, you don't know really, you know, what's going to transpire there and what type of price action that you're going to get but clearly Wednesday was the um was the big day and then we had some follow through on that uh, price action yesterday but but even without the fed day right i mean notice what happened here on monday and tuesday too we had strong gains and um you know another observation that i i you know, obviously, I'm I'm trading every day, um, you know, all day, and you know, not only when, when I'm not like you know uh, putting on new trades or 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 um, adjusting trades or taking profits, whatever, what have you. I'm also just make I'm always making a lot of observations too about. Um, you know what this market is telling us and you know where the money is being made in the market. And this week it was one of those situations where. And I know I'm I'm always beating a dead horse with it. You know I, I talk a lot about this, but um, a lot of the gains were made in the after hours market. Um, you know that besides what happened on Wednesday, which you had an event, but you know the market gapped up until into Thursday, um, and then going back to you know where we finished the week, which was quadruple witching on three fifteen, right? Um, you know the market did not look very strong, and and I thought it was particularly difficult. I mean I didn't add any trades, you know, towards the end of the day on Friday, and um, and we gapped up into Monday. So, you know, if if you're not holding any risk or if you're looking to kind of come in every day and put on trades or do a lot of day trades, I think, and I'm not just, you know, I'm not a pure day trader, never really have been a pure day trader. I'm more of a swing trader, but I don't know, you know, I, you know, there are certain trades that you can find like today, NVIDIA, for example, had a nice, uh, had a nice trending type day, but I think for the most part, you're, you're just battling with a lot of gap ups and, you know, then it's, it's kind of difficult. I think for the most part, what I've been trying to do is be patient in those first 15 minutes or even first half hour of the day. And really when we gap up, you know, I try to reinforce that in the trading room is, Hey, I'm always going to be a net seller on these days where we gap up. And then, you know, especially when, when the ticks and when we're very like extreme going into the first 10 minutes, um, you know, I kind of try to basically wait for the market to kind of come back in a little bit. Uh, because that's what we've kind of seen. And, um, you know, I think yesterday was a good example of that, too. Um, for the most part, there was a lot of just, um, I don't want to say fading, because that's not the right thing. That's not the right way to describe it. But um, a lot of just movement, um, you know, off of those highs of the day yesterday. So, um you know, bottom line is, I think the only way that you're kind of, you know, capturing this is to to be in the market somewhat, right, with trades on, and of course being in the right areas of the market, which um, which I, I think is important, and that's something that we try to, um, what I try to do for members every day is basically, um, you know, tell you where there's relative strength in the market, tell you what things are trending, tell you what things are not, and tell you what things are. 
um, basically exhibiting relative weakness. I'm going to get back to that one in a second too. Let's just recap um, a little bit of the price action. So again, um, you're going to see that there was a lot more, and this is like programs. So anything that's down 1% for the day um, gets a um, is highlighted in the red. So you could see today there, there's a lot more uh, red cells than any than anything else. Um, very little things outperformed, but the semiconductors have remained really strong. And when you're looking at the overall tech um, exposure, you know, and tech makes up about 30% of the S&P, it's really been the semiconductors that have been um, responsible for, um, you know, for, for tech basically hanging in there because, I, you know, I continue to see more um, weakness in that group uh, than anything else except for the semiconductors, which have been um, super, super strong. All right, so I'll review a little bit more in just a second, um, just to kind of go over a little bit about uh, the commodities, which I think have been, you know, which were really hot. Um, I think XLE went up, you know, I don't know how many days in a row it was nine or 10 or something like that. So, you know, we've seen some, some real strength there. However, um, the commodities, uh, you have to understand that right now, and this is something that, that I was trying to explain as well. When we look at the weekly chart of crude, right, uh, which let me just adjust for um, the contracts here, but you could see that crude is not in a, you know, ma you know massively uptrending market. Um, so let's just zoom out a little bit, right? So for example, and this is using the market webs value areas, but um, we are in a market where we're still inside the value area for the year. So we're still like range bound for this year. And that range bound is, is based on all of last year's activity, right? And using, you know, roughly around one standard deviation of last year's activity, volume, price, um, and of course, the time of last year, we're not through like that range. And um, and that level you know, that I think, you know, continue to watch is 82. So, you know, it's kind of funny that how this market is sometimes, you know, there there are a lot, a lot of energy bulls out there and you'll see them on Twitter when crude begins to move, you know, and I heard, I've heard predictions for oil. It's going to go back to a hundred. It's going to go back to 120. It's going to make new highs. Okay. Predictions are great. But we don't want to really fall into the, um, in, you know, into that trap of just listening to people who are just calling out, uh, you know, predictions just because they like something, right? And that goes, you know, beyond energy or beyond crude, and goes to any segment of the market. For now, this is still in value, and it it got rejected a little bit there at eighty one eighty. So, um, you know, so it's important to understand when things are showing relative strength. But some trades, you don't want to overstay your welcome. So I'm not calling a top for energy. All I'm saying is this is a very big resistance level in crude, which is 8180. And it's going to need to power through. And if that does it, you know, then I can get a little bit more exposed in, in uh, crude. You know, and we've certainly talked about this over the last, um, you know, couple of weeks, you know, talking about that, um, you know, crude would basically, and this is just the uh, the value area, uh, this yellow is just the value area for the month, right? We have made some gains here incurred. We just have to get through that big major resistance level, right? And that's the same thing for copper, which I've also been trade, you know, have highlighted uh, the strength in copper and what that's been doing and, you know, how to trade on an SCCO. But, you know, let's look at the weekly chart of copper, right? Notice where this is also stopped. So this has been a nice move from the lows, Right. But we're not outside, you know, we got briefly outside the value area of uh, 2024, but notice that we've drifted back inside. So, um, you know, I'm fully prepared to kind of uh, get more exposed. And right now I am along some FCX um, and I made some money this week. One of my better trades was SCCO, but um, or was that last week? M might have been last week. But uh, regardless, um, these things are not in uptrending markets yet, right? So crude, um, you know, ba based on, you know, volume at price, right? So this level, which is 4.033, is a level that copper is going to be above. So again, uh, you know, want to be ready to, to get more involved in commodities, provided that the underlying commodity is, um, is going to kind of push and, and actually, 
do something more than just, you know, move in a range, you know, move to the top of the range for the year, which is exactly what has happened so far in both copper and crude. So to be continued, and I think, you know, that's where it's our job to monitor um, these things, but understand where we've got a technical resistance level, right? And looking at these types of things allow you to be more objective than get, getting like sucked into somebody's viewpoint on Twitter about, you know, how bullish they are commodities or how bearish they are in something else. Right. We have our levels and we can make our decisions based on those levels. That's where it really becomes for me like easier to trade is where, hey, I can have an opinion on basically what I think is going to happen. But if we don't get the break above, you know, certain levels, then um, you know, I have you have to stay objective and and kind of you know curb your enthusiasm in terms of those areas if you're not getting what you look for. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Right. The more that you kind of um are have been doing this in markets, the more that you get comfortable with, hey, you're going to have ideas, but you need the um, you need the backing of the price action, right, to confirm whether that idea is going to be correct or not, right? And it's okay if you're wrong too. Um, I know some people don't like to ever admit that that they're wrong, but right, those are those are people who don't have a lot of self confidence. Um, so. <laughs> So in, in any event, see what happens to me on Friday. I always come out with something uh, a little bit harsh. Um, the VIX was up. Believe it or not, the VIX was up a little bit. But um, we're talking at a level of 13 in VIX, right? So, you know, we're at such a low level right now in the VIX that plus or minus 1% really doesn't mean anything um, because the level is so low, right? And at one point today, I think we touched like 1260 in the VIX today, which to me was is bizarre. But um, but it is what it is. Um, so let's talk a little bit about now that we've um, talked about today. I want to talk a little bit about the week, and I'll bring up the week stats in just a second. But um, before I do, let's just bring up the chart of the S and P. And I know that this is some are going to say, "Oh, geez, this is so simplistic, right?" So. It's important, I think, to just understand a little bit of pattern rec recognition right now, right? So right now, when you're when you're looking at the um, the chart of of S and P futures, we're in an up channel, right? No, let me. Sorry to break it to you, but no one knows when this channel is going to be broken, right? Either to the upside, which again, we're it's in an up channel, so so this is a nice, beautiful trend that we've got going on. There's nothing wrong with this. But ultimately, we keep getting a little bit of a rejection there once we get a when price gets a little bit ahead of itself. There's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. You just have to be mindful of how you're positioning as we're getting to the top of that channel, because now this has been, let's call it one, two, three, four, five, about five times, right? Um, over the last, you know, like month and a half of getting rejected there. Now, the positive is that. When we get to the bottom of the channel, just like we got on Friday of last week, right? We're holding it and we're holding support. So um, that's what we have. And you know, if you can make some of this market, you know, simple like this, right? And understanding that a, just like with in any situation, you're never going to be able to time the top, even though everybody always wants to do that or the bottom. Um, but really, for practical purposes, you're not really going to be able to time the top, but you know that you're going to want to make some changes once um, this trend is broken, right? And that's all it is. So, you know, the whole goal all the time for me anyway is to ride as, as many profits as you can when this market's doing that. And if the market slips below the 20 day moving average, whether it's here, 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 um, then it's just to reduce some risk and understand that you might lose some money that day. But if you've been making money all along the way, you're in a very good good position, right? But don't get scared about losing money on the one day that the trend does break. But our goal, again, is not to predict, right? At least for me, it's not to predict. It's just to ride this thing out, right? And uh, so anyway, um, that's very, it's very simplistic, I think, for the S&P. For the Qs, it's, it's a little bit bumpier. Um, you know, the Qs made a new high yesterday, but not, but did not, close um, near the highs of the session. So again, this to me is a little bit more, it's a little bit more difficult than the S&P. And I think you can kind of come up with reasons why, right? You've got much more exposure to things like the industrials, the financials, right? Some material stocks, the home builders in the S&P versus the Qs, right? So those things, those areas that I've just mentioned have been doing extremely well um, right now. Tech, eh, 
right? And if you don't believe me, um, you know, so here's a couple of things that I, I try to um, basically enforce um, to traders is that when, you know, so let's look at a chart of tech because it is the biggest um, weight in, in the S&P. It's doing okay, right? It's just kind of going sideways. It's not doing horrible. It's just not outperforming the overall market, right? That's tech, right? Software, which I've tried to mention as many times too, is that this is not has not made a new high since the beginning of February, right? So again, it's not breaking down, right? It's not below its 20-day or 50-day moving average, but it's not really doing much of anything, right? It's just going sideways. And I think some people are getting chopped up in this because you will see one or two names in software act pretty well. And um, but then there's not doesn't seem like there's a lot of follow through. Right. And it seems like there's a lot of there's a lot more traps right now in software, um, as well as if you look at the cyberspace, too. And again, you kind of have to remember that these these names of these this group has had a huge run. Right. So there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with this group taking a pause. Right. And consolidating some of those gains. Remember what happened back in here. Right. We had you know, like six months of consolidation. So you have to be patient with some of these groups and don't force things until they begin to give you a signal, right? Again, what would be a signal, right? Well, look at what happened for this six months, right? This breaking of this range was the signal, right? Right now, we're just kind of establishing a new range, making some lower highs. So I'm underexposed in this group. Right? It is what it is. Now, also, when we confirm, right, and let me go through the last group of you know, it's fun to kind of go through some of these groups. You know, here's the semis, which had a good week, but didn't didn't take out those previous highs. But still, this is more has an ascent to it, even though it didn't take out those highs, right? So if you really want to be critical, you could say, oh my God, we didn't take, uh, this is a lower high, da, 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 da. You could do that if, if you want to be super critical, but it's still, when you look at the gains over the last couple of months, it's been one of the best performing areas, right? And so what's, you know, what confirms this? Well, when we look at um, our midday note, and this is something that I send out every day, right? So this is not just for like, oh, great, 87 new lows versus new, new, you know, 87 new highs versus uh, 19 four-week new lows, right? It's not just to kind of say, okay, the new highs are winning, right? What we want to do is pick up on the groups that are showing new highs. And this is this is not something new. This has been basically been going on for about at least a month where you're seeing financials, industrials, some consumer names, right? And uh, materials have been a little bit quiet the last couple of days, but, you know, and from time to time, it's been healthcare. Healthcare has kind of gone quiet on us, right? And if I'm not going to go through all those charts too, but they're kind of in a bit of consolidation, you know? So for example, when we look at X, I'll, I'll go through one chart. <laughs> I lied. I'll go through one chart, right? This XLV has been going sideways, but you could argue that this may just be consolidation before the next push higher. So I myself have an alert on this, right? And we'll see if... Um, Healthcare wants to take uh, the next leg higher, but for now, it's uh, it's been going sideways um, for about a month at this point, right? What was this? What, this high was on February twenty third. Yeah, so this is a month of consolidation, right? So again, it's that's not bad, right? It's just it is what it is right now, and we're also not seeing, right? New highs begin to um, expand, right? So that's something that we want to pay attention to, right? Is if there continues to be one or two new names that are making new highs in healthcare, then you know that it's not ready yet. Same thing with tech, right? And again, this has been the trend now for, you know, as I mentioned this, um, you know, it, it's been about a month where you're just not seeing a lot of tech names on the new high list, right? It just tells you that that it does, it's not showing, it's not exhibiting short term because we're talking about four week. Right, the S and P four week new highs, new new lows. This is not showing; it's not showing strength right now, right? But we're going to continue to monitor this, right? And if you're a regular viewer of my note, you know that you get this every day, right? And um, and you know it's to help prepare you, right? To say, okay, let's see if we, you know, if we start to see some of these tech names expand and more names that are making new highs, right? Then you know something something different, has, something new is going on, something has changed, right? So that's what we're looking to do, um, and that's you know, in my note that I send out every day, midday note, I've tried to give you an edge where, again, if even if you're a part-time trader, um, you could read through this within 
you know, not more than two minutes. I think the average read time on my notes is like a minute and, and a half. And that's what Substack says. But you, you could formulate an opinion very quickly and know what's going on in the market, right? So every one of my, now, of course, I show positions and so forth uh, to, to folks that pay so that you get an idea of how, of what I'm doing and if I'm executing well, right? And in terms of how I'm reading what's going on. But, um, but that's what we have um, for now. And for now, you know, it's been tough. You know, I was explaining, we had, a, we have Q&A every, every Friday for members. And I was talking about the industrials, right? While they continue to kind of grind higher, and this is one, you know, look at the difference between the industrials, right? And say software, right? What would you rather own over the last month? This or this? this right even though it's it's a little bit of a more difficult trade because um it's slower movements but it's just methodically making um new highs now what 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 do we want to be aware of right well of course number one the price action if it dips below like the five 20 day moving average but going back to our note right we want to if we start to see where there's where xli is still going up and there's less of these guys Right then, you know something is changing. Um, the breath is changing a little bit within the group. All right, so um, you know, um, so I do spend some time to compile this list and kind of let you know what's going on there on a on a daily basis. All right, let's um let's continue. And you know, the best way, in my opinion, when something like this is going on, is just to sit in trades, right? And we have been overweight in the TTG trend portfolio, right? I own the these um, RSPN, which is the equally weighted. Um, right, it looks very similar. Uh, this is the equally weighted industrials, right? Um, so I've been long that. I've also been uh, long names like Eaton, um, ETN, as, and United Rentals, and also names like Hub, which also made a new high today. Hubble, right? Probably nobody talks about this name, but look at it go. All right. So here's your week performance. So I mentioned I would get to the week performance. What what was the best performer for the week? Well, let's start with the indices. So first of all, this is what we looked like last week, right? So SPY was down four tenths. IWM was down 2.1%. The Qs were down 1.2%. Nice recovery. SPY, um, I think SPY actually almost led up 2.2%. Qs actually did lead up 2.9%. Real nice recovery there. Um, IWM was up, but trailed a little bit. Remember, IWM was down 2.1% from the previous week, right? And um, gold was all over the place this week. Um, still finished positive, but gave back, a, you know, hit new highs and then kind of uh, gave back a lot of those new highs. Interesting, the Bitcoin uh, was down 7.6% this week. So a lot of profit taking there. Um, here is, we'll just use Bitcoin futures, All right? Kind of lost, you know, re tricky um, because we had a really nice candle on Wednesday, try to push higher and couldn't, couldn't really do it. And then today um, sold off back below that uh, 20 day moving average. So not a great place to be, I would say right now, um, if you're bullish, you want to see prices stay above um, those two moving averages right now, the five and the, um, and the 20, which price is both below. Good news, I would say, is we're, we're above the 50. Bad news is the 50-day moving average is all the way down here, right, which is quite a bit of ways, all right? And then um, so, and then to kind of look at some sectors, um, and by the way, you know, the, the dollar was up this week, you know, so up 1.1%, really gained the last two days um, after selling off on Wednesday, and uh, and TLT was up this week, up 1.1%. Uh, remember, last the previous week, TLT was was had a big down week. So nice to see it come back, but kind of like the small caps um, didn't recover all of those uh, losses from the previous week. All right, groups that did well, home builders, uh, you know, amazing, um, up 5.3%. Um, again, it's one of those groups. You talk about the groups that are showing relative strength and the and that are trending. And the home builders are one of those groups. Um, really, really nice uh, performance. Um, even though in in the face of some, you know, in the face of rates staying stubbornly high right now, you know, TLT has um, has been 
has been bending but it hasn't been breaking um and um and the home builders continue to push out and you know and here's a good example you know of consolidation and and a next leg higher in the home builders so very impressive you know i've talked up a lot about the home builders and not just the home builders but the flooring companies and roof companies and everything else that goes into a house um, a lot of these names have been super strong the semis uh, were the second best up five four point five percent interesting to see the solar name up three and a half percent, but clean energy altogether um, trailed, uh, still up one percent for the week. But there's a difference. There's starting to be some separation between solar companies and clean energy companies, which I find interesting. Um, communications, which a lot of that is Meta and Google. Google had a big week this week, um, up uh, 3.2 percent. Um, and internet, you know, they came roaring back a bit, you know, after, um, you know, also being down a bit, for, I think, for the last couple of weeks. Transports had a good week, up 2.9%. So you guys see a lot of groups are up over 2% for the week. You even had defense and aerospace in there. One of my best trades for this week was FTAI, right? I know, I, you know, Boeing gets all the headlines. The other companies that do really well, nobody talks about them. This is one of them. Uh, this is... Um, this is FTAI Aviation, um, really nice. And uh, I did sell a good portion of my position um, into that strength this week. Also, um, consumer discretionary did okay. Um, and industrials, you know, steady up another 2.6%. What didn't perform this week? Biotech, down 1.2%. I, I got a question about biotech. And, um, you know, if you can't, if you can't come up with an answer within five seconds after lo looking at the chart, if you're like, ah, I don't know, then it's probably not a good trade yet. And that's kind of what I think for biotech. It had this nice little bounce to get back above the value area, but look at it come right back down. So the good is it's still holding its 50 day moving average. The bad is it's not trending back to the upside. Um, in terms of how I look at charts in the value area and plus this 20-day uh, moving average that uh, it got rejected at. All right, guys, um, I was just going to recap as well uh, without making this a super long video, but I mentioned I was looking at where some things are month to date. And um, if you look at this, if I can bring this, ah, <laughs> get too many windows open too is the problem. Right. So month to date, you know, here's what I was referring to with clean energy down about seven and a half percent. Tan should be in here, too. So this is month to date, by the way. Let's see. It. I don't see it. So I'm going to search for it. Yeah. Tan's up two percent. Right. Solar's up two percent. Clean energy's down seven and a half percent. To me, that's a that's a bit interesting. And there's your biotech down four point five percent. So you've got a real mix, I think. Um, still more groups up. The gold miners, believe it or not, are up 12.3% uh, month to date. That's your best performer. And then then oil services and then semis uh, still put a lot, you know, putting in another really good month. But uh, there are other areas in, that are um, that are doing um, a few areas, not that not that many that are doing a little bit better. Um, you also had the, 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 you know, you've got your home builders up 5.5%. Um, agriculture, even though it was down today, um, is, is also up about 5% uh, for the month. All right, guys, that is it so far. Again, I'll recap that um, in another week, too, uh, once we have uh, March in the books. Guys, have a great weekend. Um, and if you're not a member of Tribeca Trade Group, get on board, uh, tri TribecaTradeGroup.com, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the training room. Have a great weekend, everybody.